what is up guys welcome to another video i hope you guys are all doing good in this video i want to explore a thought because uh i've been thinking about something honestly lately something has been on my mind and uh it has to do with sweden it has to do with the country which raised me now i gotta give you guys a little bit of a disclaimer uh, i don't know if you guys know this but i am a black man that grew up here in sweden and most part i've been I've been very happy in Sweden. Uh, I'm not going to shit on the country because this is the country which raised me. This is the country which has given me all the opportunities in the world. And honestly, if it wasn't for Sweden, I don't know where I would have been uh, just a, as a black young man. Because I see a lot of people do a lot of, a lot of shit, right? A lot of shit. But I believe, I believe that Sweden has... There's a lot of potential here, right? But we also have a lot of problems. When you think about Sweden, what's the first image that comes up? Uh, do you think of like Stockholm people with a great sense of style and yeah. minimalist apartments? Yeah. Or do you think of midsummer out in the forest by a lake or something? Or maybe the like sustainable... Se it's a closed society. That That's the crazy part. That's what I'm saying. Like when you look at it from outside, you're thinking like, oh my God, I want to go there. Midsummer. Swedish people, fashion, all of yes, but it's a closed society. Or maybe, maybe for the niggers, I don't know. Safe political system. I feel like whenever I tell someone that I'm Swedish, these are the types of things that people point out, which are all like super positive. But of course, you know, maybe they're just being polite and there are negative associations with Sweden too. Either way, I do often get the question like, since Sweden seems kind of great, how come I emigrated? Well, let me tell you, these are the seven reasons yes. why I left Sweden. Okay. First of all, I've lived outside of Sweden for more than 11 years now. First four years in London, then three in Berlin, and now another four and a half in London. And there is no part of me that wants to move back to Sweden. A summer house? Yeah, but why? This is the thing, this is the untold truth. Why? It's not... It's not the housing, it's not the weather, it's, it has to do with the people. It has to do with some of the people, not all the people, because I've met really, really nice Swedish people. Not throwing whole Sweden under the bus, but some, bro, some of, like, bro, you look, you get this, like, fuck you, nigga, get out of here, you know? Yes, please. But living there full time, no way. Don't get me wrong, Sweden is great, Sweden is beautiful, it's just not for me. The first reason for that is one thing that's both a pro and a con, the trend sensitivity. I don't know how trend. that all started, but for some reason, Swedes are very much keeping up with the trends, like to a degree that I haven't met in probably any other country really. This is fun and people watching and apartment watching in Stockholm is amazing, but the other side of this is that there's like this anxiousness about not being wrong or not being clueless like you need to stay on it and follow the right accounts and listen to the right type of music and just well like it gets kind of exhausting and very uptight and yeah and this is this is a good criticism it's great that it's actually coming from a swedish because i thought of it you know everything here is so trendy and even the music right i remember i'm a piano uh, Afro beats, right? No one was playing that before. No one was like, I would play that at parties. People were like, what is this garbage? We got to listen to Avicii. We got to listen to Swedish House Mafia. And I'm like, bro, like there are other artists, but they're so like focused on what is trending. Like th that is not trending right now. We can't jump on it. But when it starts to trend, Oh my God, Rema is really good. Oh my God, I, I started to listen to a lot of African music. I'm like, bro, you don't even like African music. Have your own opinion. That's it. That's all that I have to say. Just have your own opinion. Don't be constantly like following these trends and bro. So that's 100%. 100%. Bro, it's crazy that she said that. Can I say it? A little bit boring. One thing I love about London is that there isn't just one trend everyone's adhering to, but like a multitude yeah. of different trends and subcultures and tastes and personal preferences. Yeah. And you know what else? Anything goes in London. It's so much more fun to me. 
We have this cultural concept in Sweden called jantelagen, which is very similar God. to tall poppy syndrome, if you know what that is. Basically, jantelagen, or the jante law, says that no one is better than anyone else. And you should never, whatever you do, think that you're something special in any way. Yeah, and Slatan Ibrahimovic, our greatest football player, had problems with this. Great, like, think of this. He's the greatest football player that we have ever seen in Swedish history. But what did they do to his statue? They destroyed, like, it's like, and these are these like small subliminal things which keep on happening, keep on happening. I gotta pull back my ego a little bit, but I'm a really, really good artist. Really, really good, right? Phenomenal. But every single time I'm like sitting in these boardrooms where there's like, they look at my shit and they're like, whoa, this guy's actually good. We don't want, we don't want him to outshine. So then they start making up things like, oh yeah, right now we're, brah. Like, okay, let me tell you a story, right? So this happened, was it maybe three years ago? Oh, close to maybe four years ago, right? I come to, to these artists, right? These white Swedish artists, they, they're a rock band, rock artists. I'm like, hey, um, I've noticed something, a problem. We're all making music. That person has this platform. That person has that. Why don't we unify all the platforms? We create one platform for, ev for all artists, right? You guys can post. We can post. The guy's like, it's a very good idea. Like, wow, that's, that's a really good idea. At the moment, we're not, we're focusing on our own thing right now, but man, that's, it's a really good idea, but you know, let's keep in touch. Okay. I kept in touch with the guy and a month later, they went, this band went filmed with all of those artists, all of those artists, like every single white artist in, in town. Then they did like this huge music video and then they released it. Right. And that's one of the things which I was, which I also pitched. Right. And I was like, you did not even ask me the guy, which actually came up with the idea. If I wanted to be a part of it. And it's like it's those small little things, which keeps on happening. Right. Small little things, which keep where, where there's like, no, it's, us and it's you guys and like even here it's like they call us the hip hoppers i'm not a hip hop i make normal i like i make music where i just sing i'm not a hip hop artist but they always say that oh yeah yeah but yeah he does hip hop he's a hip hopper why do you have to categorize me as a hip hop artist why not just an artist Bragging is a national sin in Sweden. I actually didn't notice just the full extent of this culture before I left Sweden. And now whenever I listen to like a Swedish podcast or watch a Swedish TV show, I'm just like squirming a bit because this way of looking at other people is so prevalent. For example, everything has to be mellow. Yeah. So if you give someone a compliment, you need to mellow it out by adding uh, some negativity. Yes. Like instead of saying, oh, I read your book and I loved it. Swedes will say, you know, I finally read your book after it being on my bookshelf for months and I have to admit yeah. that actually I was really surprised by how much I liked it. Do you see what I mean? It's yeah, like Yeah, it's 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 an undertone of insulting you at the same time as praising you. Yes. Is that even a compliment anymore? No. So I want to give people monumental compliments. And I feel like if I'm good at something, I want to be able to say that without it feeling like I'm bragging. Yeah. Ah, maybe you heard of the sweet deal you have as an employee in Sweden. The minimum wage is high. You get like at least five weeks paid vacation. Yeah. Parental leave is great. And, you and that's, that's the thing. I'm not shitting on the country. I'm not saying like this place isn't good because it's great. It's beautiful. Like the women here are the most beautiful women in the world. We've got great pay, like bra, the minimum wage. It's like, it's perfect. And you can ask for a lot. No, I need this. I need that. I need these vacation. Like you can ask for a lot. And that's what I like about it. We want to be a part of it. 
We want to come here. We want to learn the language. We want to honestly be a part of it. But when you when you're excluded, right, and then you get insulted, it's like your pride can't take it at the end of the day, right? How much are you going to take? But if you if you do it somewhere else, like Slatan Ibrahimovic did, if you do it somewhere else, you come back, bro. You're all of a sudden you're Swedish and they want to put on that Swedish short on you. But he's Swedish. You never, ever, ever, ever expected to work overtime. No wonder then that almost every Swede is completely content being an employee yeah. for the remainder of their professional life. This means though that if you want to start your own business or becoming self-employed, you're really work. giving up on the sweet life. Since salaries are high, things cost quite a lot too. And from a social standpoint, we're not really pushed or encouraged in Sweden to take professional risks and start your own creative gambit or whatever. Mm. So honestly, if I stayed in Sweden, I don't think that I would have ever started my own business. I just don't see that happening simply because I don't think the thought would have even entered my mind. And writing a book, I don't know. I don't think I would have gone for it. Feeling like content and comfortable and like financially stable is of course wonderful, wonderful things that few people in this world get to experience. Yeah. And it's by far one of the best and most precious things about Sweden. And I am beyond grateful to have been brought up there with, you know, that sense of security and free healthcare and free education and all of that. The healthcare system here is very, very good. It's, it's one of the best in the world. And I'm, I'm, that's one of the reasons, like, sometimes I feel like I want to go, I want to leave, but, you know, the safety keeps you here, you know? One of the reasons I left is because that I, in the back of my mind, had this nagging feeling of, like, simply knowing that nine to five, it's not for me, I can't hack uh. it. I'm too much of a square pig to fit into like that round hole, if you know what I mean. Yeah. I want to give a big, big thank you to BetterHelp for being a paid partner in this video. Yeah, I gotta say that guys, therapy is very important. You gotta get therapy. You just have to, just have to. It helps with the overthinking. And if you're a genius like me, then sometimes you need it because like, I would say I'm very sensitive when it comes to like people. You know, I hate, like I don't hate people. I like people. I think people are very interesting. But sometimes I get this like, I don't know, there's, there's something about people, their energy. Sometimes it's just too much. And, you know, therapy, therapy does help. It does help to like get all those thoughts down on a piece of paper. And then you start to think and then you start to construct and you can organize your thoughts. Uh, so, yeah, instead of spending money on that the big booty stripper you can spend some money on your mind and actually work on it at no additional cost so if you're considering online therapy with BetterHelp, click the link in the description or visit betterhelp.com mustard yeah. thank you again to BetterHelp for supporting this channel and now let's get back to the video okay. oh you already know about this one the weather yeah. and i'm not just talking about the howling north wind and the yeah. minus 20 degrees winters I'm talking all year around. But I don't mind the weather, actually. I don't mind the weather. I like being able to snowboard in the winter. I like... I don't know, maybe it's just me as a person. I kind of like... Kind of like the weather. Because then you get the winter, you get the summer, you get the... Like, you, you get to dress. You get to try on different outfits. And it's not only always sunny. Because that's what I've noticed, like, if you have too much sun, you get lazy. You just, oh, I'll just drink around. It's like, because then you're just thinking you're always in this, like, party kind of party mode. And you're like, okay, let me just, nah, bro. You, you need to, you need to work. In the winter, the best thing to do is just to work. Just to sit down, work, do the, do the work. And that's, that is the best thing about Sweden. Let's, uh... Let's check, check out the last one and then we'll go move over to the next YouTuber. October's and to-go coffee. It's cold and grey already in September most years and spring doesn't come in March, it comes in May. So my birthday is in May by the way and the day that I was born my parents had to clear like this much snow off the car to like drive to the hospital. 
David and I are two of the few people in this world who can honestly say that we moved to London for the lovely weather. The cold is one thing, the darkness, that's another thing entirely. Oh my god, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. Dark, this is just, this is honestly, I get it, I understand, but this is no reason to leave. So, yeah, that's the end of the video. I hope you, I hope you learned something. I hope it was good.